All right, so I have all my devices that can run iOS 26. This is my only device that have iPad OS 26 because it's the only iPad I have. Right here, I have my brand new iPhone 17 Pro Max, which is my newest phone. Um, I'm upgrading from the iPhone 13 Pro Max, which you guys can see right here. This is my old phone, and yeah, you can see the back glass is not in a good shape. And this is my iPad Air 5th gen. This thing have an M1 chip. Um, this one have the A15 Bionic chip and the iPhone 17 Pro Max have the A19 Pro chip. I would imagine that from this to this would be a big jump. That's for sure. I wonder what about M1 because M1 was first introduced in 2020. It's a FIO SOC. So I just want to see how it would handle of those benchmark. And as you can see, I have four benchmark apps right here on three of these devices. Before I start the test, here are the version of iOS as it's running. iOS 26.0 on all of them. These are the exact version that's running. Oh, Although for the iPhone 13 Pro Max, it has its own iOS 26.0. These two have the same exact version of the iOS. Okay, there we go. So just to show you guys again, no apps in the background. So let's start off with the Jazz Disk Bench Lite. Um, this is quite pretty much easy. So let's start off the oldest device first, the iPhone 13 Pro Max. Next on the iPad Air. And next to the iPhone 17 Pro Max. This might be unfair a bit because two of these devices are 256 gigabyte. However, this iPhone is one terabyte. Obviously a huge jump. It's kind of unfair though. So I guess that people with the iPhone 13 Pro Max with 256 gigabyte storage, they were interested to get the iPhone 17 Pro Max one terabyte. Just want to see how it would perform. Here the differences pretty much. And this is for the iPad. So let's up, let's do Geekman 6. Here's the specs, iPhone 13 Pro Max, iOS 26.0, A15 Bionic chip at 2.23 GHz. If I remember correctly, this thing has 6 core CPU and a 5 core GPU. For the regular iPhone 13, pretty much it's similar except it's just one missing GPU core. And this thing has 6 gigs of RAM, while the regular iPhone 13 have 4 gigs of RAM. On the other hand, the iPad Air 5th Gen, of course iOS 26, and you can see Apple M1 chip at 3.19 GHz with 8 gigs of RAM. I don't remember how many exact core and GPU core but I'll just put it right here. And this is the iPhone 17 Pro Max. You can see this one is too new that it doesn't even show the exact model. It just shows the internal model number which is iPhone 18 comma 2. Wow, I guess I got an iPhone 18 earlier, huh? Anyway, um, iOS 26 again. It doesn't say what CPU though because it's too new. This thing has an A19 Pro chip at 4.25 GHz and this thing has 12 gigs of RAM. So. Let's start off with CPU benchmark and oh, three, two, and one. So let's see which one finished the benchmark test first. By the way, I don't have any cases on all of them. So I guess that this thing wouldn't heat up that much compared if you put a case on. So yeah, uh, let's just wait for the benchmark. All right, so these are the score for all of these devices running Geekbench 6. So for the iPhone 13 Pro Max, the single core is 2,434. Meanwhile, on the iPad Air, it's 2,358. Slightly lower compared with the A15 chip. But when you look at the A19 Pro, 3,649 for single core. And moving on, let's look at the multi-core. The multi-core for the iPhone 13 Pro Max with an A15 Bionic chip is 5,994 on the iPad Air. Air M1 8695 and the most impressive one would be the iPhone of course 9464. This will be a big jump for me that's for sure. So I find it odd that the single core score for the M1 is slower than A15. However I was low key surprised that the A19 Pro can beat the M1 chip. So I will clear off the apps again. 
So I guess I'll wait for a few minutes for the phone to cool down. Although all of these devices doesn't heat up that much, especially this one, cause this thing have a vapor chamber cooling. I'll wait for a bit, then I'll do N22 benchmark on three of these devices. All right, so it's been like this much amount of minutes. So let's start with the N22 benchmark. Oh, iPad Air 5, unknown, even though the iPhone 13 Pro Max came out first before the iPad Air. And of course this one is unknown because it just came out like a couple of days ago. So let's start off with the benchmark. Three, two, and one. And here we go. We're just gonna wait for it then. Alright, so these are the final results. Of course, this one is higher, second highest, the lowest. One thing that I find it weird is that even though this thing gets the highest score, but the iPad Air finished the benchmark first. Again, I'm gonna wait for all these devices to cool down. So, I will clear off the apps and last thing that I'm gonna do is 3D Mark. Okay, it's been this much of minutes, so let's do 3D Mark. And one thing that I noticed on the iPad is that the battery drains a lot. I don't know why it drains a lot, even though this iPad is like a year and a half old. I wouldn't be surprised this one drains a lot though, considering this one is like nearly four years old, but a year and a half year old iPad, that's strange. So I just found out that still Nomad Lite, of course it works on these two, but on the iPhone 13 it says your device doesn't meet the minimum RAM requirement of 8 gigs for this test. The 13 Pro Max recommend this, so I guess I'll do the Wildlife Extreme. And actually, you know what? I'm gonna just turn on unlimited mode because why not, right? And uh, okay, I guess I'll do this. Three, two, and one. Three devices at the same time. So yeah, again, we're just gonna wait for it to show the results. All right, there we go. Finally, the score shows up. Um, of course, this one is the slowest one. The score is 24-21, 14 FPS for average. Meanwhile, on this, 47 Sony one, two times more. Average frame rate is 28.6 FPS. And on the iPhone 17 Pro Max, 5240 score, and the average FPS is 31.1. This is what it says for the 13 Pro Max. Your score is better than 43% of score for the iPhone 13 Pro Max. 74 for this and 86 for this. And of course, you can see this is the highest currently because this is the newest device, of course. So, I hope you enjoy watching this benchmark video. Thanks for watching. Check out my other videos right here. And yeah, goodbye.